then click OK. So the analysis will be done. So in the output, there's only one statistic that you want to look at, and that's really gender times strategy. That's the interaction between gender and strategy. And what we wish for is that we will get a non-significant relationship between gender strategy and the dependent variable, which is the case here, which indicates that the homogeneity of regression holds. So remember that the p-value that you will get should be Sm uh, should be larger than 0 0.05 so that the homogeneity of regression will hold. And I'm going to indicate that here. Now that we have done these four, uh, we've gone through these four stages of the analysis, what we will need to do is to do our actual ANCOVA analysis. So the preliminary stages before doing ANCOVA were quite a few, but we have to go through them. Of course, the last stage can be checked by looking at the results of ANCOVA. So let me go through the analysis, analyze, uh, the general, lin general linear model menu, univariate uh, analysis. I'm going to go back to model and make sure that I will choose factorial ANOVA or for factorial design because this is what we need to do in order to, uh, to carry out an ANCOVA analysis. Click continue. As you see, the dependent variable remains to be test scores or English test scores fixed factor or the independent variable is our gender and the covariate is strategy. We do not really have to choose contrast here. What matters is EM means and we don't have post-hoc analysis since post-hoc analysis is done only if the independent variable that's gender has three levels or more. In this analysis it has only three levels. But post-hoc analysis is done exactly in the same way that you would do it in ANOVA. And I have uh, made quite a few videos on ANOVA analysis. I'll make sure to leave the links for you to, to watch them if you're interested. So EM means, or uh, expected marginal means, are quite useful. You can move them to the other side. And you, you can also look at the relationship between gender and the uh, independent variable, uh, sorry, dependent variable by making a Bonferroni correction if you're just concerned as to whether you may commit a type 1 error. So you could just uh, select a Bonferroni correction uh, to estimate the confidence interval. And then con uh, click continue. Uh, if you're interested to look at the uh, distribution of the standardized values for uh, your dependent variable, or you covariate, you could also choose standardized uh, residuals. This is not uh, strictly one of the assumptions of ANCOVA, but some people would say it's important to look at it. So I choose this, and I'll just show you how to look at it in a minute. This is going to create a new variable for you, actually two, because we're creating it for two variables. So click Continue. Under Options, we can choose Descriptive Statistics, which is useful. Estimates, uh, estimates of effect size and homogeneity of t uh, homogeneity test, and then click continue, and that should be it. Now you are ready to click OK and run the ANCOVA analysis, and here we are. For males, we have 707 people, whereas there are 561 females, and this is the mean score of the two groups. As you see, males have scored slightly lower than females, and the grand mean of the entire sample is 24.23 with uh, slightly different standard deviations actually not slightly but kind of significant it like stands out to me so I immediately look at Levine's test of equality of variances as I told you the last assumption but the point is that Levine's test of equality of variances has been violated here's uh, what we could do what mm, from one point of view, one school of thought assumes that since uh, ANCOVA and actually the, the family of general linear model are quite robust, uh, the violation of this assumption may not necessarily affect your results, especially given the fact that our sample size is pretty large here. Uh, and if you go by that school of thought, we can say, well, this will not probably affect our results significantly. On the other hand, other people might argue that, 
since the Levine stairs of equality of error variance is, is, um, is not held, what we should do is to stop here in, and do a uh, non-parametric ANCOVA, which SPSS does not immediately provide with us, but through using some syntax, you could do that. In this video, I'm not going to discuss that, but just wanted to let you know that the, the, there are two schools of thoughts. So uh, let's go by the first school of thought, which would just ignore whether the Levine's test of equality of variances is or is not significant, because we want to see if the results uh, are significant, uh, or the results of tests of between subjects effects are significant or not. There are two things that I would like to highlight here. It's the fact that gender has a significant impact on our dependent variable, which is English total scores, with a partial eta squared of 0 0.011, which is around only 1% um, of, um, of the variance that is observed in English total score. So yes, gender has an effect on English total scores. After you take away the effect of strategy on English total scores, strategy being the covariate. Now, what I'm interested in is to also look at the same analysis but without having a covariate, and and just figure out what happens if I don't have the covariate uh, strategy, and just investigate the relationship between gender and English total score, which is basically a simple ANOVA test. I'm going back to the univariate uh, model. I'm going to move this back and just click OK. What I'm really interested in is just the eta, partial eta square. Yeah, gender does have, in an, in an ANOVA test, gender still has an impact on uh, the dependent variable, which is English total score. But the partial eta square is smaller here, 0 0.008. But once you control for the effect of strategy, you will have a slightly higher partial eta square and this is the ANCOVA results with a partial eta square of 0 0.011 and if you're interested you can take a look at the grand mean which is similar to which is the same as the mean scores that we looked at in the same way the gender mean scores are reported here and this is the pairwise comparison with Bonferroni correction which also indicates that there is a significant difference between males and females when it comes to their test scores. Okay, so in this analysis I have shown that gender has a significant impact on English total scores if we control for the contribution of strategy on English total scores, with a strategy b being a concomitant variable or a covariate. I've also shown that uh, if you do not control for the effect of strategy, then the effect of gender on English total score will be slightly underestimated in an ANOVA test. Yeah, so this brings me to the end of this presentation. I hope you liked it. And if you liked it, please give it a like and uh, stay tuned in for the next videos on other types of uh, GLM models. Thank you and have a good day.